New Hampshire's Matt Fogg loves playing with his heavy metal band, but it was the collaboration of caregivers at the Heart and Vascular Center that orchestrated his life-saving care. I was actually doing some flooring, and uh, I couldn't walk more than 20 feet without being out of breath and feeling an incredible pressure right here. And a few months went by doing that, and it progressively got worse. When he first presented, um, he was in what we call cardiogenic shock, which is when the systems of the body are all shutting down as a consequence of the inability of the heart to pump blood. Basically, he said, if I had nine lives, I used every one of them. The first course of action was just to stabilize him. He was very close to death. With a variety of uh, intravenous medicines initially, we were able to improve his uh, cardiac function so that the rest of his body could improve. If we couldn't move forward with more advanced therapies, um, the probability of him dying in the hospital was almost 100%. You can try medications, you can try pacemakers, but when those fail and the patient continues to deteriorate, VAD is the only other option. VAD is a ventricular assist device. It's surgically implanted, much of the same surgery as you'd have for a valve replacement or bypass surgery. It takes care of the plumbing of the heart. What Leslie really did is she came in with like a VAD, like a demo VAD to show you what it would do. And they had to teach you everything about the VAD, how to change your batteries, how to clean what would be your drive line site, change out your controllers and do all that stuff before you could even get the VAD. All this was just part of what had to be done before Matt could have the VAD implanted. We placed a balloon pump, which is a mechanical device that goes in the leg uh, to give him uh, further support. Uh, with this, his um, heart function improved enough so, so that we could make the decision to move forward with the VAD. Day of the surgery um, was really just do or die, no pun intended. An LVAD uh, is implanted through a sternotomy, which is a typical open heart surgery operation, uh, opening up the entire chest. We core out uh, a nickel-sized uh, hole in the tip of his heart, which is where this pump connects up to. The other end of the pump connects up to the aorta, the main artery leading out of the heart, to pump blood for, uh, throughout the rest of his body. The vat actually unloads the heart. So as a consequence, it allows the heart to get better. The scar tissue tends to reduce, and a variety of inflammation or inflammatory markers improve. With this, and with good medical therapy, uh, the heart has a chance to uh, undergo what we call reverse remodeling. Matt went home after a month. He would come to clinic regularly to monitor his medications and any concerns he had with the VAD. There was one setback. He did have a, a small stroke, which made things even more complicated because now we had to balance um, the management of his VAD with the management of his stroke. So the first few weeks were challenging for him hemodynamically, but he got better from that perspective. Matt improved so much, the doctors looked at the possibility of a rare explantation. Matt couldn't wait. Take it out today. I have a knife, take it out today. That's what he said. I said, well, we're not gonna take it out today. So we turned down the support uh, that the VAD provides to the bare minimum. And with that, his heart continued to look quite good and his exercise capacity was wonderful. Ironically, when I got the VAD in implanted, I um, looked right at him and said, this thing's coming out inside of two years, and it came out. It was a really happy day, that's for sure. And the, to get it out couldn't come soon enough, I can tell you that much. So if we were to look at all patients with VADs, about 5% of them are lucky enough to actually get the VAD explanted. And uh, the patients who tend to get better are people just like Matt. Uh, those who don't have coronary disease as a cause of their heart failure. Even with this amazing technology, these results would not be possible without the seamless collaboration that makes the Heart and Vascular Center unique. At the Brigham and Women's Hospital Heart and Vascular Center, we had a constellation of physicians, surgeons, pharmacists, social workers, and nurses who came together towards a single unified goal amidst great uncertainty, and that was to heal Matt Fogg's heart. Everybody at Brigham, it's, it's like a fine-tuned machine. The fact that everything was in one place at Brigham's was incredible. It, it made it really easy for me. As rare as explantation currently is, Matt's case still provides much more hope for the future. We want to usher in an era where patients like Matt Fogg with advanced stages of heart failure will have recovery of their heart function as the norm rather than simple support. If you want the best care, you absolutely go to Brigham. For Matt, it's back to life as it was, 
spending time with family, and jamming with his bandmates. Matt was up for any challenge that we had, and he was just going to be the guy who went home in three days, and he wasn't going to have any problems, and everything was going to be great. And I thought, all righty then, off you go. And for the most part, that's exactly what happened. 